Hi everyone, this is Kelly from the Truth and Story, and this is purely a collector's video. Um, <laughs> this is me being really, really excited to have been able to trade for this Green Man Tree Oracle, which is an out-of-print deck by John Matthews and Will Worthington. And when you look at this conglomerate of decks, there will be various authors and um, create deck creators, but every single deck here has been painted by Mr. Will Worthington, whom I clearly adore. And um, I'm so excited because I now have all of the decks in which have Will that I'm aware of. Now, if there's someone that I, you know, I have no clue of, please feel free to let me know of that. But I'm pretty sure I have all the decks here of Will Worthington art uh, decks. And so, am I excited? Yes, I am excited about this because clearly. I love Will Worthington, and I don't just, now I say, this is my only probably collection that I have that is literally a collection because Will Worthington drew the decks. Um, so yes, there is the collector aspect here because as soon as I had a few of them, then I was like, oh, well, I just might as well get them all. And you know, that kind of collector part is certainly present here. However, I use these decks also. So these are decks that I use. I use the Celtic Lenormand a lot. Uh, the Druidcraft and Wildwood Tarot are in my top 10 decks. I use them. This is a personal working deck that I use um, very seriously for myself. The Druidcraft is a personal workhorse or professional workhorse. I use it a lot uh, professionally. Uh, these are definitely two decks in my top 10 tarot deck lists. And I use, I don't use, this is the one that I don't use the most. I use these, um, again, at times generally more to do with intention setting or um, kind of in the way that I use the Wildwood. If I am doing certain Wheel of the Years, I will look for what are the plants and the, the um, animals that may be associated with that time, and that would be kind of set out with intention. But I also use these as oracles. Um, this I use probably the least, even though I've had wonderful readings from it. It's just one of those things that, you know, that seems to be very specific and I just don't use it a lot because it's a very set system, but I love it and I love having it and I got it a really good deal. And so um, all of these I have purchased except for uh, the Druid Plant or Oracle. Uh, Mr. Lunar, aka Remco, uh, sent me the Druid Plant Oracle and I did a reading for him um, in exchange for it. I think with the Druid Plant Oracle, I think I did, might have done a three voices reading for I can't remember. I think it was a Will Worthington because he knew that I, I, had, I had this. Uh, and so he knew who these were a little harder to find um, in the States. And so, yeah, so that and then this one I actually traded uh, a deck for. Uh, so, yeah, this was the only one gifted to me in this pile here. But it is, uh, it's, it's very exciting. I mean, if anybody knows who is a bit of a, have a little bit, and I think all tarot enthusiasts have a smidge of collectorness in them. Um... But yeah, so I, I'm so excited to have wrapped this up thanks to Mr. Zach who had messaged me this past Saturday during live chat. And um, I said, email me. And we made it happen. And then it came today. So from Saturday to Wednesday, this was accomplished. So um, yes. So excited. I'm going to do a quick little showing you of the actual decks. I guess this is just simply a uh, video honoring the work of Mr. Will Worthington. <laughs> just, I'll be right back. Okay, here we are uh, back uh, with the decks all out of their uh, boxes so that we can just take a quick gander through the eyes of Will Worthington and so yes clearly I am a fan but you can also see one thing uh, very important is that almost all of these except for this one which I have just purchased uh, or not purchased just 
uh, received. Um, and this one, which uh, comes that way, all of my decks, Will Worthington decks, have been trimmed. And I, that would horrify, I know, some real collectors. That's why I would say I am a pseudo collector because um, I have no issue uh, trimming these decks. And this one will be trimmed as well just because all the rest of them are. Um, because I actually use these. I don't, I will never sell these. Uh, so value, um, purchase value or resale value is not something that I really worry about in decks that I have uh, that I'm planning on keeping because my intention is to use them and to make them fit however it is that best uh, inclines me to use them. Uh, and you will see that across m any of my decks. It is not out of disrespect for the decks or the artist or anything to do with that. It is simply making them the most usable for me uh, because uh, I believe that the best uh, respect to be shown a deck is to do, to use it. So, uh, now, it, again, if you're just collecting it, that's one thing. But again, I actually use these. Uh, and so, yes, they are all trimmed. And no, none of them have I will ever leave my possession. So that's fine with me. You can also see a theme here in his decks, which is interesting because these are created by different people. Uh, the deck creators are different. And then uh, that other than and the um, Lenormand deck, they have very like clean backings. Now again, some of that is because it's been trimmed, but still he tends to go towards a simple um, backings. Um, if I, I can't remember if I've edged this. No. I need to edge this in silver eventually, although I don't mind it because it kind of looks good with the backing, but that's silver. And I I might have already put one coat of silver on there, I can't remember. This I've recently edged in gold and I need to do one more coat of that. So yes, this is the collection of cards. I believe the first deck that I had uh, bought for was the Druid Craft, but I, it could be the Celtic Lenormand. See, I can't remember to be honest. It was it was when I was it was early on when I was starting to get more and more decks. I almost think that I purchased this first. I could go back and watch videos. It doesn't matter. I'm going to kind of ish ishly go through when I got them. Uh, this is the gorgeous Celtic Lenormand. It is uh, created by, uh, or the book is written by Chloe McCracken and the artwork, of course, by the esteemable Will Worthington. Uh, this, this came uh, borderless like this and it is gorgeous. It is a Lenormand deck based off of Celtic themes. There are a couple changes to fit that theme, such as um, you have a Celtic cross, but that's still a cross. Uh, you have um, a burial mound instead of a coffin. You have um, a hand fasting, which I love, instead of a ring. You have, instead of a garden, you have the meadow where people would meet to help each other to cut down... Um, their, the grain and they would socialize. Uh, I must have passed the hand fasting up somewhere. But so there's a couple changes. But other than that, it's a basic Lenormand. There are also extra cards to expand it. Uh, extra man card, uh, man and woman card, as well as extra bird cards for the goddess and an extra tree card for the god. There is an extra snake to add in the element of transformation. Uh, so there are, you know, it kind of expands too. But as a basic 36 deck, which is what you see here, um, I just have the 36 cards here, hand fasting. Um, but it works beautifully as a Lenormand deck, and I use it quite, quite often. So that's the first. I mean, just look at the artwork. is just stunning. Uh, one of the things that I love about Will Worthington's artwork is his skies. So I'm always, if there is a sky in the background, I'm always looking at it because I quite like, and I also like his water, the way that he does things with water in them. But his skies are just often absolutely um, gorgeous. So I believe this was one of, I know this was one of my first ones. And it was either before or after that that I purchased the Druid Craft. And I knew that when I bought the Druid Craft that I was going to trim it. I'd seen it trimmed. It's quite a large deck, untrimmed. And I knew purchasing it. And this was one of my earlier trimmings too. I did my Llewellyn and I think this might have been my second trimming. 
uh, and I love it. Uh, so it just, his artwork is so gorgeous. I mean, look at the backgrounds and the skies. Um, this is one of my top 10 decks. Truthfully, the Druidcraft's probably up there in one of my top four decks. Uh, it is a professional workhorse. Look at the skies and the waters. Um, it's just stunning. Now this is um, uh, just it's a stunning deck. It's, I recommend this deck for people wanting to learn tarot, but don't maybe want the Rider Rich Smith, um, you know, kind of more Christian base. This is definitely pagan based. Druid and craft is a blend between Druid and witchcraft or Wicca. Um, and so that is definitely evident, but so are the traditional meanings very evident and easy to find as well. So I actually recommend this as a beginner deck. Uh, because the guidebook is just fantastic and it's just it's gorgeous I love the princesses um, I love the connection between the uh, major arcana it's just an absolutely stunt look at them yeah it's just a stunning deck I love all the princesses I love the hermit I just love this deck and it's a workhorse deck I use this deck uh, professionally uh, a lot. So that was that's the Druid Craft. I believe the next deck that I got was the um, Druid Animal Oracle because, of course, this was in the baby phases of my Three Voices work obsession. <laughs> and so I had these two and I wanted to get a Will Worthington Oracle deck and this was the easiest one to acquire and so I purchased this one. I trimmed this not because I really didn't mind this with the borders. Oracle deck borders don't bother me as much as tarot decks. I very rarely trim Oracle decks but because I had this borderless uh, Lenormand deck. I had already trimmed this to the titles. It just fit together to have this uh, done the same way. And so that's why I went ahead and did the Druid Animal to the same you know way that I did, leaving the titles on the bottom as I did with the Druid Craft, which is my preferred way that a deck is set up. A title at the bottom and the rest of the three borderless. And uh, so that is the art. I mean, it's just stunning artwork. Look at that Ren. It's one of my favorite cards. Um, it's just beautiful. Look at the wolf. I mean, even the cow is beautiful, right? <laughs> the fox. Uh, this is one of my least favorites because it, it doesn't quite feel as finished as the rest of his uh, images. But I mean, I'm sure that it was purposefully looking like this because his work is very purposeful. This is one of my least favorites. But, it, you know, the skies. I mean, his skies are so dramatic. Uh, so, yeah, so this was the Druid, is the Druid Animal Oracle. And then Mr. Remco, a.k.a. Mr. Lunar, um, I don't, I may have gotten this one in the, between here and there, but again, I'm not trying to stick too closely, but, uh, the Druid Plant Oracle was more difficult to get in the United States, or I should say even more expensive to get, even though it wasn't out of print, for some reason it was difficult to get here. And so I, it wasn't one I had jumped on right away. I was kind of keeping my eye out for one. And Mr. Remco, uh, sent me... Uh, this Druid Plant Oracle, which of course then I had to trim so they match because very often I will mix these two together as one deck. Um, and so um, I trimmed it the same way that I had trimmed the other one. I haven't done a lot of work with this and I really want to because I'm, I am working on getting to know herbs and flowers. I do use it during, like I said, when I do solstices or different, uh, um, days of the wheel of the year i will use this to pull certain herbs that are or plants that are associated with that season and so i do use it but um i don't use it a lot in oracle uh, i think that mr remco was an exchange i gave him a three voices reading and i think it was the first uh, three voices will worthington three voices reading i did so that was pretty cool look at the poppy i just i love poppies um so yeah i mean it's, it's again it's everything Thing that you would expect from uh, a will where the skies are just they're just gorgeous 
this is a this this uh, plant oracle I think is so stunning and there's so many different little details in stonework and things that you um, that you have to pay attention to in the background that ju that only add to uh, the flavor of his decks so um, uh, yeah just love it uh, he just does an amazing job and so that was the next one uh, then, I don't know, it could have been before or after that, I picked up the Wildwood. When I had purchased the Druidcraft, I had gone back and forth between these two because they're very different decks. Uh, but they were both, I didn't know how different they were when I decided to get this one. And it was a good decision. In terms of you know, using professionally, this is, again, a workhorse. And uh, it gets amazing, blunt, and clear, and honest readings. Uh, it's stunning. Uh, this deck, however, is completely a different horse altogether. Uh, it is not a Rider Waite Smith based deck. It is a deck based off of the Wheel of the Year. It is a remake of the Greenwood Tarot. And um, the only thing that I don't particularly love about this is the Greenwood Tarot actually changed the order of the majors to fit with the Wheel of the Year. This keeps the same Wheel of the Year associations as the uh, Greenwood, but they put the number order for the majors into the order of a traditional deck. And I kind of wish they hadn't done that just because... Um, it's not a Rider Waite Smith deck, and so it just uh, having it in the right order numerically would have been helpful to me as a user. Uh, and I don't really care; it doesn't need to reflect the Rider Waite Smith or the Marseille setup because that's not what it is. Uh, and so, yes, this is a stunning and powerful deck uh, that is um, beautifully depicts the mm, court cards as animals. Here's another. I love his wrens. I'm going to attempt to paint uh, a Will Worthington inspired wren because I love them. But all of the court cards are animals and it's just beautifully done. Again, I use this. Uh, this is a very powerful deck for me and it's something that I use when I'm setting intentions. If I put out a geomancy figure sigil, uh, I will put out uh, specific cards uh, with my intentions and I will be from this deck sometimes from the Terror of the Hidden Realm that's also a power deck of mine but usually at the, from this deck uh, so I mean the artwork is just gorgeous Mr. Will Worthington you know take a bow that's how I feel that this that's that's what this uh, this video is it says Will Worthington take a bow you're amazing so then I stumbled on, I wasn't really looking uh, hard for it, but I stumbled on the, or, uh, the Camelot Oracle in a little shop uh, covered in dust and half price. They really didn't have very many decks. They had a couple tarot de or angel decks, maybe a Rider Waite Smith, and then this. They, they, it was a very tiny little unused shop. And I found this, uh, and again, by then I had pretty much all of them except for the one I got today, and they were all trimmed. And so, you know, for consistency's sake, uh, and just because his artwork just, I think, leaps out when it's untrimmed. That's just personal preference. Again, it is no disrespect. I do it out of respect for the artist because his artwork just is amazing and does not need to be hemmed in whatsoever. Uh, and so this is the Camelot Oracle and it actually reads really well. I need to bring it out more um, because what you do is you pick a, I have a, I have deck reviews probably on all of these except for this one. Um, and I will be doing a deck walkthrough of this even though it's out of print. You can get this for not horribly priced. Uh, so I will be doing a uh, quick walkthrough, actually I made after I do this video. Um, but you pick a, a sort of a defender, somebody to defend you and somebody to uh, contest you, to ask you questions uh, and to help you through a situation. And then you pick a um, place card of where it is you're trying to get to. And so th it tells actually quite a bit in a three card reading. It's a, a very specific system, but it works beautifully. And again, the artwork, you know, all up close mostly faces of people. And just look at the Lady of the Lake. Again, look at the skies. So, yeah. 
absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I had found that one unexpectedly. And then today capped off my uh, collection. Now I will say of all of the cards, and I want to make sure, yeah, this is the worst card stock. It is very, very thin. Uh, it's not the same even as, because this is probably, this was probably similar size. Uh, because when I trim this down, they're going to be about the same size, which is great because I could actually combine a deck of plants, animals, and trees uh, if I wanted to. Uh, but these are much thicker cardstock than this. So I, I will say, but this isn't a review, uh, and this isn't really um, about the cards, it's about the artist. So, uh, but still, it is quite thin. But this is all, so this one is called the Green Man Tree Oracle. And so it has all of the letters of the Om or the Ogum. It looks like Ogum, but it's pronounced Om. But I always end up saying Ogum because you just, yeah, I grew, I didn't know for such a long time that it gets into your head just like I Ching versus I Ching. Um, so it has an image of the uh, tree and or plant because there are a couple ohms that are represented by plants and so it has the name of it um, of the actual tree or plant it has the name of the ohm as well as a representation of the ohm here and so for instance we have hazel and Aspen. I will say for someone who has a little bit harder eyesight when they don't have glasses on, the very thin writing on the dark red is difficult for me to read, but I should have my glasses on. Uh, we have Spindle there, we have um, Apple here, and so on. So it's mostly about the artwork. And there is a green man face that you can see if, in each of these trees or plants. At that. I mean, his artwork is just amazing. I get to see the sunset or sunrise there. Um, so yeah, so it is the final capping. I will be trimming it. Again, Oracle cards, this white border doesn't bother me. Uh, this is simply for sake of continuity with the rest of my decks. And uh, so, yeah, I will be trimming it because, again, I know this is out of print and there are many collectors and people will be like, <gasps> but it's not, uh, for me, it has absolutely nothing to do with resale ability. This is me loving this these decks and using these decks. So that is the, the final uh, of my Will Worthington uh, deck collection. And so I personally, not that I, he will never see this video, but this is a personal from me to Mr. Worthington. Thank you for uh, putting all of your time and your art um, into these beautiful decks that I will be using my whole life. And I have done many, many readings, especially with the Druidcraft and the Celtic Lenormand. I have done an immense amount of readings with these decks, and they have helped people. And so this is a shout out to Mr. Worthington and a giant thank you. I hope that you've enjoyed this and that you all have an absolutely wonderful day.